So as far as being Ric Flair's roommate, uh, what was that experience like? Well, I, I was back there. After I moved back there, because Vern wanted me to, I was talking to my brother. I said, you know, here I'm a young guy, you know, 25, yeah, 25 years old at the time. I said, Vern, or Jack, I said, are there any bars around here that, you know, with nightlife and whatnot? And he says, you know, he wasn't going to any bars. You know, he was married and had five kids. And he says, I think over on Excelsior Boulevard, uh, you'll find a bunch of bars over there, nightclubs. And uh, I hear that's the hottest uh, area in the Twin Cities uh, to hang out at night. So I just drove over there on a whim, and I'm looking at these bars, and I see one uh, called George's in the Park. I said, that looks interesting. It's a big place, a big nightclub uh, with live music and whatnot and I go in there and uh, I asked the guy at the door the doorman I said you guys have a cigarette machine he says yeah it's right over there so I go over there take my 50 cents out 50 cents a pack back in those days and uh, I put it in the cigarette machine pull the lever here comes my pack of cigarettes out and I, then I stood up and the guy standing there by the cigarette machine he says I, I hate to bother you but are you ken patera i said yeah he said i saw you on the wild world of sports two weeks ago i said yeah and he says oh my god he's <clears throat> what are you doing in here i said well we all have to be somewhere and here here we are well, to make a long story short, after a while, we, uh, Rick and I became real close friends, and uh, <clears throat> we started uh, uh, thinking about getting a place to <clears throat> live together with a couple other guys, a couple bartenders. And uh, so one thing led to another. We rented a house uh, in uh, South Minneapolis right off of 30. <clears throat> Uh, 35, uh, 35E, uh, the freeway that runs from Duluth all the way down to uh, Brownsville, Texas, I think. It's the longest freeway in uh, North America uh, at that time. I know there might be something longer now. But uh, so we rent this house, the four of us. Well, Rick was always a party guy. When Rick got into wrestling, I told Rick, I said, wrestling was made for you, Rick. And we were living together, and he kept bugging me about meeting Vern Gagne. I said, as soon as I get back from the Olympic Games, Rick, next year, I'll take you down to meet Vern Gagne and see if we can get you in the training camp. So anyway, prior to that, I talked to Vern about Rick. And I told him, I said, Rick uh, Flair, he uh, knows uh, your son, Greg, and uh, jumping Jimmy Brunzel. Uh, Brunzel was playing uh, football for the University of Minnesota. And he says, oh, yeah, well, I'll ask uh, my son, Greg, about Rick. So uh, Greg says, yeah, he'd, he'd be great to uh, come to wrestling camp. Well, Vern says, well, there's only one problem. But we already have five guys. We have Greg uh, Gagne, Jimmy Brunzel, Ken Patera, a guy that played pro football for the um, Dolphins, and uh, 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 what else? Uh, Broncos. Yeah, his name was uh, Bob Bruggers. And we have another guy from Iran, kind of a skinny guy. His name's Cosro Vizieri. But he was uh, in the 68 Olympics down in Mexico City. And so that's the five guys, you know. I don't know if we have room for a six. Anyway, after about two weeks of ask and burn practically on a daily basis, will you please just, you know, I'll bring him down to the office here and you talk to him, interview him, and see what he's up to. He said, okay. Well, Rick was two-time uh, 
amateur state champion over in Wisconsin, uh, but he grew up in Minnesota. He got kicked out of public school in Minnesota, so uh, his parents were fairly wealthy. His father was a doctor, so they sent him to a boarding school over in Beaver, uh, Beaver Falls, I think it was, um, Wisconsin. So he, I think he even got kicked out of there, but he did get a degree, high school degree. <laughs> he was a wild man <clears throat> his whole life. He just has that boundless energy, you know, always wants fun. And he, he was the type of guy that needed attention on a, I mean, daily basis. And uh, the more, the merrier. And so, uh, uh, we were training together, and then, of course, Vern started the wrestling camp when I got back from Munich. Uh, that, and that was, I, I got back the end of September. And uh, so we started that uh, wrestling camp the 1st of October. So we went October, November, through uh, the first couple of weeks in December. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.